Hi, this is Cal Ripken Jr., and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter back with you all over the major platforms. Spotify, Google, Apple, Stitcher, Deezer, you name it. Download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review. We are brought to you by Stanley Law Offices, Bryant and Stratton College, Liverpool Physical Therapy, and our great friend Brian Conboy at Mass Mutual New York State. Get your financial future in order today with Brian. We did. Super excited about where we are headed with Brian Conboy at Mass Mutual New York State. He can meet with you. He can lay out a plan. Whatever it might be, you're heading into retirement, a, a youngster's going off to college, whatever the case is, head on over to advisors.massmutual.com. That's advisors.massmutual.com. Find him on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. Brian Conboy, Mass Mutual, New York State. He is the official financial advisor of the ML Sports Platter. Really excited to bring in Tyler Dunn, the amazing feature writer for Go Long. Go, make sure you get your subscription today at golongtd.com. He's got a bunch of specials. We'll get an update on those as well. He's the founder of Go Long. Uh, he's been in sports journalism forever, of course, past time with the Journal Sentinel, with the Buffalo News, covering the Packers and the Bills, and now is, in my opinion, the best NFL features writer in sports media, period, end of discussion. And make sure you listen to the Go Long podcast as well with he and Jim Monis. They do an amazing job. And again, go subscribe, go read at golongtd.com, at T.Y. Dunn on Twitter. Tyler Dunn, how are you? Great to be here. Thanks so much, Mike. So round one of the NFL draft is is in the books. Um, we're going to get to that in a minute. I want to start actually with you, with Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. What is next for him and the Packers? Well, as we know, um, you know, when he's dug in, he's dug in. You know, if you're out, you're out. Right. Whether you're a family, whether you're a friend. He's a grudge a guy. He's a grudge guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got the yeah. most famous grudge yep. in sports. I mean, it's yep. part of the reason that he, he is a three-time MVP. You know, I mean, he he, he finds reasons to be pissed off, and, and, and he plays really, really well. So, but once you're out, you're out, and it sure sounds like he is out, like he is done with the Green Bay Packers. I, I don't know how else you can read this the night of the draft for this report to come out. He didn't deny it. Like, clearly mm-hmm. he's calculated. Clearly he knows how to leak and what messaging he wants to get out there. So through this, he's making it clear to everybody, I'm done with Green Bay. And Green Bay's saying, we're not done with you. Green Bay's saying that he, he's part of the team. I think they would love it. For him to play another year, let Jordan Love develop, and then make that move when it's time, um, I think obviously that they're surprised it got to this point. But wow. I I can see him being traded because if you're smart, I mean, don't you want to get something for him while his value is this high? Yeah. Like, and, yeah. it, and it behooves him to do it after June 1st. That's so right. I right. guess we just have to kind of wait until then. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't play another snap, snap in Green Bay. Unbelievable. Um would you would, do you want to see him as the Jeopardy host or as the Packers quarterback in 2021? Oh God! Well, he's definitely using that as leverage, right? I think that's his that that was kind of the, the point of leverage he was able to masterfully create, where he can basically say, "You better get something for me, or else I'll just go to Jeopardy <laughs> and you'll get nothing." Like he is a different dude yeah. that has done like he can't he could. I don't know if he would seriously do that. I think he wants to keep playing football, but he can definitely float that as a as a real possibility sure. to get his way out of Green Bay. Um, I, I I think he's going to continue to play. Uh, is it in Green Bay? I, I I'm just looking at the flip or the human side of it. I'm not looking at the numbers and the finances and and, and trade scenarios. I'm just looking at the, who he is as a person. And I I would be shocked if he just decided to play now. What he could do still is go to his friends in the local media, sit down for a conversation, and say, "Oh, it was all it was all fake news, right? It was all, you know, that was just a bunch of nonsense in the draft." Like, you know, but no, it, 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 I, I, I would think people could read through that at this point because it's it's pretty clear he's unhappy. Um, and and if he's this unhappy in your Green Bay, you, you would probably want to get something for him. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I think people in the sports community don't understand he can make major money at Jeopardy too, folks. He's not going to take that much of a pay cut. And plus Aaron Rodgers is just like all these other guys. They retire the second they're set for life. 
their kids are set for life, their grandkids are set for life, their great great grandkids are set for life. So, uh, and the Jeopardy deal, I mean, I, you know, I, I've I've listened to a bunch of different podcasts and people talking about that. I mean, he could make fifteen to twenty million dollars a year hosting Jeopardy. And by the way, he only needs seventy one calendar days to do it, and a lot of those days are certainly uh, doable in the NFL season because of private jets and the off season and how these guys kind of, uh, you know, get around, uh, get around the world these days. So it's, it's anything's doable for him. He's got the world by the balls. NFL round one draft. Uh, I know you're sad that the mock is over. I know the mock, <laughs> the mock drafts are over, although we can still speculate and hear everybody else's See mock stuff moving. Mocks out yeah, there. yeah, right. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still coming. yeah. Yeah, and as we record this, actually, and and, and air it, the draft will be over. But I want I want to actually okay. focus in hard though on the first round. Major takeaways. Anything blow you away? Winners, losers. Just take the floor and go all over the place. You know, I I love Zach Wilson. I know that there's definitely some concern about his competition at BYU. And when he did play a really good defense in Coastal Carolina, they, they kind of beat the snot out of him. So, I mean, I, I get I get all that. But just in terms of how he plays the position so creatively with such such improvisation, but it all has a purpose. Like, he, he, he floats left, you know, flips that torso around, guns it downfield, but it's not like a Johnny Manziel type of play it's it's, he he saw something on film that told him that is what he had to do in that exact situation which is is the what we missed with Patrick Mahomes everybody basically did like people thought it's not gonna work Texas Tech quarterbacks but he was creatively just doing stuff within the confines of a scheme and it's hard to find that quarterback so I, I love Zach Wilson I know every quarterback that gets drafted by the Jets ends up being not good, a bust, or, you know, not a bust, just gets motto and shoulder injuries and has no talent around like Sam Darnold. Um, but I, I think it's going to work out. I think Joe Douglas knows what he's doing. So I, it was a move we all saw coming, obviously, right? But I, I love that. And I guess what else stands out? You know, what's, I, I don't know what Philly's really doing with how he rose it. I mean, uh, Devontae Smith is, is a great player. Don't get me wrong. I love him. I mean, that's... He'll, he'll have a great NFL career. At some point, though, some of these GMs have to be kind of held accountable. I mean, they whiff at wide receiver year after year after year, and they try again year after year after year. And I, I'm just shocked that he's still running the show, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I'm really surprised he's running the show. And, and, you know, they did pass on Justin Fields, if, I, if I'm remembering right, from last night. So you had a shot at a potential franchise quarterback. It, it, you're going to have to compare him to Jalen Hurts the rest of their careers now. So, I hate, I don't know if you hate it, but I I hate the argument of competition in college. I I despise it. It comes up every year. It comes up a little bit later uh, than, you know, it's not two or three months out. It's usually literally like a week or two out where it really ramps up, Tyler, and you know how this goes. Well, he only played in the MAC. He played Division One Double A. He played for uh, Delaware. He played for this school, that school. He didn't face competition. He only played X amount of games. You know what, man? If you're good, you're good, and that is the proof that has been happening in the NFL for decades. Terry Bradshaw, Louisiana Tech Hall of Fame. Jerry Rice, Mississippi Valley State Hall of Fame. Jackson State, Walter Payton, Hall of Fame. There are small schools galore. Big Ben, Hall of Famer, Miami of Ohio. Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl, went to Delaware. There's a mi- Miss, Brett Favre. Uh, of yeah. course, exactly. I was just about to say him too. There's So the point is, we, you and I could go on for, I don't know, the whole podcast just naming other guys who went to small schools. I hate that competition thing. If you're good, you're good, period. Totally agree. I mean, and that's where you have to find that player as yep. a scout, yep. as a GM. It's on you. I mean, that's why you're paid, right? That's why you're in a position. You have to have the ability to find that special talent where, wherever it is. I mean, if, if it's in the SEC, if it's in a conference that nobody's ever heard of, like, you, that's your job. So yep. they're out there. You just listed a bunch, and we could spend an hour listing off names. So. Who is that guy in this draft? You know, BYU definitely isn't a pushover either. I mean, that's of course. it's still a school with a pretty rich uh, tradition at quarterback. And locally, the pressure on the quarterback position, as Aaron Roderick, his coach, kind of told me, it, it's insane. Like, 
can't really realize it if you're not there, but sure. I mean, they were booing Taysom Hill. They didn't want him out there, and now the guy's like beloved. So <laughs> uh, I, I think that they, that element of localized heat on Zach Wilson and what he went through and he didn't earn his job back and playing through injuries. Like I, I know it's not playing in New York and and being in the NFL, but he he is used to it a little bit. I you know we look at him and we don't think he saw any adversity in his life, right? You know, he looks like he's straight out of like a Disney movie. But <laughs> he, I think he has gone through a lot of ups and downs yeah. um, behind the scenes that you know that the Jets obviously believe made him who he is, and, and they didn't care that he wasn't in the SEC. Tyler Dunn, our guest, ML Sports Platter here at TY Dunn on Twitter, the Fantastic Features Writer, National Football League, GoLongTD.com. Get your subscriptions now. The writing is unbelievable, and the podcast is sensational. I'm hooked on, on it. Uh, I'm hooked on all the stuff you do, and, of course, you and Jim Monas doing a great job. Uh, the Bills, you know, they get Greg Russo at 30. I think it's a, a really great pick. I, I mean, I think he checks a ton of boxes. He's versatile. He's got size and length and speed. Uh, he solves long-term, you know, with Hughes and Addison coming off the books and short-term because he might be able to play and start opposite Hughes right away. Uh, and, and the word blend for me comes in uh, as well. I mean, he's kind of a prototypical guy who can blend those skill sets together. He's a little bit taller, but a little bit smaller in terms of weight, and that's what the DM edge rusher is now, that quick, versatile guy. Do you like this pick? Love it. Love it. I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't know if he's going to be good. <laughs> like, we'll see. I mean, I saw what everybody else saw, you know, on YouTube and whatever, and this is a guy with, what, 15 and a half sacks, and it's proven that he can get after the quarterback. And just in terms of what the Bills need, I mean, they couldn't really go luxury at, at running back or receiver or anything like that. I don't, I don't think I, – I really do believe they had to get somebody that could get after Patrick Mahomes. That's what it comes down to is that's between that, – that, that, that's really the one player and the one team standing between you and a Super Bowl, right? You, you don't really have anybody that scares you on the front line right now. Jerry Hughes is getting older. Um, Ed Oliver, he, he kind of looks like a bust at this point. You know, it's – so it sounds a little harsh, but they got to get more out of him, and they got to get more out of him in a hurry. AJ Epinesa didn't do much as a rookie, so it does concern me. Like you wonder, can they really judge talent on the defense line? But it absolutely is what they need. They, they bring him in, and we'll we'll see if it works out. But I, it was good to see them just kind of take a player that they absolutely needed to take. Okay, right now a huge topic of conversation in Western New York is the window. The Bills have this amount of time to win a championship, especially after what they did last year. The Allen contract coming up. They're bringing the band back together. But, as we know, the next logical step isn't just, well, they made the AFC title game, so now they have to get to the Super No, it's, 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 it's sports, man. You hit the reset button and everything changes. One thing that happens that affects you is everybody around you improving. The Dolphins, the Jets, the Patriots, these teams in the AFC East, man, they're getting better. <clears throat> they're having good drafts. The rest of the conference is right there. Carson Wentz right. is a Colt. That could strike. The Chargers are going to be pretty good. Tyler, how how much – this is the question. How, how open is the window still for the Bills based solely on everybody else improving as of, you know, just the last few months? I think that it's still pretty open because, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of this year, I should say, but when you do pay Josh Allen, it's going to get really difficult to, to, to spend like they've been spending the last few years. And they've been able to just go get guys like Mario Addison and A.J. Klein. And you know, we, we think of the big name guys like Stephon Diggs, but they've been able to just kind of spend away on, on pretty much whatever they want when you can't do that anymore once you do pay Josh Allen. So when that happens, you better be drafting better. And they, their drafts have kind of been up and down, mostly down other than the quarterback. So that's number one, and, and everybody else is getting better. So, I mean, you just kind of nailed it. Like, th this window is wide open. I mean, they'll be the favorite to win the division. They'll be a Super Bowl contender. All, all of that is 100% true. But the Jets are resetting again. You have to think they're going to be better than they were. Uh, the Dolphins... It, it, Kind of depends what you think about old two attacks, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a fan. Like I, I kind of think he is a small quarterback who plays small, uh, but he will have a ton of talent around him. Yeah. I mean, they definitely surrounded him with talent, so you have to think he'll be better, especially a year removed from that injury. And then New England, you can never count out Bill Belichick. 
You know, it's they, they signed all these players. The way they're looking at it, I'm sure, is, uh, you know, they went they won seven games with out much talent out there at all last year, right? Everybody opted out, and their their team kind of stunk from a talent standpoint. Everybody's getting hurt, and they still won games. I, I'm sure that ego that Bill Belichick has thinks, all right, I'm going to go out and sign all these new players. I'm going to go get my quarterback, and we're going to contend. Um, I don't know if it's going to be true. It depends what you think about Matt Jones. I think at Alabama, you talk about playing in the SEC. I mean, he had a clean pocket all the time. He had receivers wide open all the time. We'll see how he does in the NFL when the, the bullets are flying a little bit more. Um, but they, they, they're in a position, they think, where they can turn this thing around quickly and compete this year. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt. And it, it, it's funny because what we talked about earlier with the whole, you know, the competition thing in college, sometimes guys can have a ton of great competition and not play as well in, in the NFL. It can go the other way, of course, as well. A lot of it has to do with coaching and where you are in the system and all that. It's just, it, it, it's all, like you say, I think it really, it, it is the evaluation part and, and the scouting part, and you're not going to get it all right, but but you have to strike on some of them, and if you you know you strike on some, you, you can hang around a little bit, which brings me to the Cowboys. Jerry Jones will not relinquish GM, his GM spot. Tyler... I don't see them going anywhere in terms of being a championship team until he actually says, I'm out, I'm being the GM, I'm going to own the team, and here's a football operation guy. Doesn't this guy, as he gets later in life, I mean, he's on the back nine here, don't, doesn't he want to, if he wants to win a Super Bowl, isn't the best way to do it by hiring a football ops guy to actually go out and run his team? Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely think so. <laughs> I've been asking around that myself, um, chipping away at stuff, and it, yeah, it, it sure seems as if, it, it still is that strange apparatus in Dallas where yeah. you don't really know kind of who's in charge. I know Will McClay definitely has a lot of say. That's somebody they trust and somebody that has made some pretty good decisions from a personnel standpoint. But at the end of the day, Jerry Jones is running the show. Stephen Jones is running the show. And they're not there day in and day out like everybody else. Yeah. you know. But they, they do have that say. And they own the team. So the way they look at it is tough. Um, and I, I agree. Until... Until that changes, I don't see them winning a Super Bowl. All of the pressure will be on them this year. Like, they gave Dak Prescott that money. They, they gave Zeke the money before, Amari Cooper the money. They paid pretty much everybody, but you still have a, a pretty terrible defense. Um, the interior of your team is weakening. You know, sometimes all these bells and whistles, they look really good, but the substance of your roster isn't there. I, I, I like the Michael Parsons pick. I mean, at least it wasn't a receiver or a running back or something. But I think their problems go well, well beyond um, adding a, a linebacker from Penn State. Like their their defense was historically bad last year, and as we saw with Mike McCarthy in Green Bay, you know he, he's not a defensive coach. I mean, he, there's something to be said for just the mentality that your team has. Take on the personality of your coach, and his teams historically have not been known as very tough teams at all. In the first round, with all these quarterbacks, five taken in, what, the first 15 picks. And by the way, most mocks had five going in the top ten. So, hey, even though that was close, you weren't exactly right, the majority of you football pundits. I, there, you know, there's another mock thing, right, that didn't go right. So, um, But out of these guys, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, um, you know, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, uh, where, who do you think – will be the best out of the group, and who do you think will be the biggest bust? We got Lawrence, we got Wilson, we got Trey Lance, right, Mac Jones, and and, uh, and Fields. The best guy coming uh, out in the end when we talk years from now and, and the guy who ends up being a complete disaster, for whatever reason. You know, obviously, like you said, complete guesses right now. I, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is just, he's so good. As much as I like Zach Wilson, I don't know. It's really hard to nitpick. Trevor it seems Lawrence's so game. obvious that he's going to be a star, right? I mean, my yeah. God, yeah, six six, athletic, oh, done for an arm. I mean, uh, you know, it remains to be seen how Urban Meyer's offense really does work in the NFL. I think the NFL has changed enough over the last five years where you can kind of do the type of stuff that, that he's done. Well, back to Bowling Green and what Utah, Florida, Ohio State. I feel like. I think it will be all right. Look at the talent they have in Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, um, DJ Shark, LaVisca Chanel. They've got a lot of talent in Jacksonville. So I think it's a great situation to be in for Trevor Lawrence on top of being unbelievably talented himself. Complete bust. I mean, we're all trained to think that 
you know, Kyle Shanahan is, is, is a genius, and, and maybe he is. <laughs> maybe he is able to just mold uh, Trey Lance into this Hall of Fame quarterback. You know, Donovan McNabb. You know, he's just he's built like McNabb, but he might even have a stronger arm. We've seen the, the signs. He also played one game last year. He also comes from North Dakota State. Like, I, we'll see. I think there's a lot of unknowns and. What do you do in terms of Jimmy Garoppolo? How do you get him onto the field? You know, Trey Lance needs to play. Like, he's played one game in the last 400 days or whatever. Like, he hasn't played. So, uh, can you really sit him a year? I think it's important to get those reps. Uh, I don't. I think there's so much unknown around him. I'm not going to say he's going to be a complete bust, but that would concern me the most. couple more real quick ones for Tyler okay. Dunn from Go Long at T.Y. Dunn on Twitter. GoLongTD.com. Get your subscription. Listen to the podcast where podcasts are found. Your co-host, Jim Monas, on this podcast is fantastic. I love the insight. I love when you guys have Doug Whaley on as well. Um, and you guys just go around. It's a roundtable of, of talking about so much of the inner circle stuff, the, the inner walls. In your time working with Jim, what has stood out to you about him from a player evaluation standpoint? And we got to believe he's going to get back in the league at some point, right? He's so he's so smart. He's so sharp. He, I mean, he thinks outside of the box. I think that maybe that's his greatest gift. Is he he doesn't succumb to groupthink and what everybody else is saying about a player or a situation. He can kind of remove himself from it and think creatively. And I think that's so important. And, and you know, we, I think so many of these scouts and so many of these GMs they, they tend to kind of fall in the same traps of just thinking the same way about things and and jim doesn't do that like he's he's got a perspective from philly uh new orleans and obviously in buffalo yeah. being around some star star players like McNabb, like drew Brees, some star coaches like andy reed like sean payton like jim johnson on the defensive side of the ball Craig williams and you know buffalo they drafted a lot of really good players they did they just they couldn't find the quarterback and ended up costing yeah. jobs so yeah. i sure hope he gets a job because as, as, as much as I love hosting that podcast with Jim and I could do it forever, um, he deserves he deserves to be running a team, or at least scouting for a team, because I'm telling you, I talked to a lot of people, people in this game, and this is an, an unbiased take, I promise you that. He is right at the top of football knowledge. You know, He's just loaded, loaded with football knowledge and loaded with a fresh perspective that teams would be stupid not to add to their front office. Final thing for you, Drew Brees retires. How will you remember Drew Brees, the football player? You know, one of the greatest. I, I'm not sure if he's the greatest. He will be in the in the record books until somebody else comes along and breaks it. But uh, I, I just think a prolific, you know, stat machine number one. But he did it at six feet tall, and yeah. up until him. In terms of pocket quarterbacks, that had never really been done. So I, I think he absolutely changed the way teams have to look at the position and kind of open the door for a guy like Russell Wilson and, and even Zach Wilson. And you know, just you can make it as a shorter quarterback. Um, you know that you don't have to be six four, six four. You don't have to stand in the pocket and be straight. Like he, he can maneuver. He can find those passing lanes, and he did it better than anybody else, just statistically. So um, yeah, one of the greatest man for sure. Awesome. Tyler Dunn, make sure you go follow him on Twitter at T.Y. Dunn and uh, the GoLongTD.com website to get your subscription. Listen to the podcast with he and Jim Monas. It's fantastic stuff. The longtime features writer, National Football League. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. I mean, it's crazy the amount of exaggeration and the amount of craziness that goes into the NFL draft and the what people think they know and the mocks and all this stuff. And I don't care if a guy has been inside the NFL, he's been a scout, he's been this. You're going to get stuff wrong, I understand that. But it's it's the stuff that people just come up with. Like the competition thing. The, well, he didn't play in the SEC, so he's not. So what? You know, so what? Go ask Fred Jackson, longtime Buffalo Bill, right? Went to Coe College. I think he had a pretty good career. I mean, there's small school galore in the NFL. If you're good, you're good. A lot of what happens is when you get into the league, what is surrounding you? And that's not just at the quarterback position. We focus on it a lot, but it's wide receiver, it's running back, it's it's a million different things that can go into having su- a successful NFL career. I just think this is going to be a really, really, really great, great, great uh, time to watch 
what happened in the first round. Obviously, as I record this, the, the rest of the rounds still have to take place, but I really wanted to focus on not just the draft, but a couple of other hot topics in the NFL with Tyler Dunn, who's the best in the business, uh, features writer, National Football League side of things. Again, go longtd.com, go get the subscription and listen to his podcast with Jim Monis as well. Uh, I wanted to hit on the Aaron Rodgers stuff a lot. I, I, I just, I'm kind of with Tyler. I mean, I know the Packers are saying that they're not going to trade him, but Whew, it does seem like Aaron Rodgers is, uh, you know, when he makes up his mind, man, <laughs> you know, that's it. It's kind of like Derek Jeter. He's a grudge guy. ML Sports Platter, all over the major platforms, brought to you by Bryant and Stratton College for every and in life. Bryant and Stratton College, two and four-year degrees are starting soon. Two great locations in and around central New York as well. If you live in CNY or around the state, you're looking to make a quick commute and study at Bryant and Stratton College. Great time to be a Bobcat. Academics, athletics, and excellence. BryantStratton.edu. Bryant and Stratton College, the official college of the ML Sports Platter. Also, a tip of the cap, thank you to Ken's Auto Detailing, Dave Cho Artwork, our good friends at the Vince Aguera Consulting Group and Welch and Company Jewelers. Log on today and get those engagement rings, wedding rings, watches, you name it, necklaces, over at WelchJewelers.com. I'm Mike Lindsley. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.